I saw uh, the, the image on the cover, that photo of Alicia and her father, the, the black and white photo, and made me uh, want to read the book, and I was so moved by her story. And, um, and I, I thought of Andrew, I thought it, would, I thought it could be a movie, it's, it's so poetic and um, beautiful story. And um, I thought of Andrew because I knew he grew up at that time and had a similar experience with his dad. And I thought he'd be the best person to tell it. And so I sent it to him and, and he, I'm so impressed that Andrew didn't give up after eight years of trying to get this made and did a beautiful job. Um, yeah, so uh, Sophia shared the book with me. I fell in love with it. I grew up in San Francisco, also in the Bay Area around the exact same time, also with a gay father. And so it really, really resonated me, with me. Um, I had never read a book like that before that described this scenario. So um, then we had to get Alicia to sign off on me, which was, <laughs> I think she had dreams of Sophia making the movie, and then who am I, this guy, I'm a photographer, why, and we, uh, we went and met with Alicia in, um, in Cambridge um, and uh, on a snowy afternoon, and uh, we explained sort of uh, my connection to the story, and um, perhaps you can finish that answer. <laughs> um, well, I, uh, I think working with Sophia actually was something that came up at my book launch as my agent and I were like, what if moments about the book, like, what if Sofia Coppola options it? We were like, oh, that would never happen. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, when we heard from her, we were immediately excited and wanted to take a meeting. And then um, getting, but sitting across from Andrew and Sophia at Cafe Algiers in Cambridge and just learning how deeply personal the story is for Andrew and really getting a sense of their vision for the film um, and being that really focused on this perspective of, um, you know, Alicia and this really unusual story of, of Steve. Um, and I, I really feel they did an incredible job. And, and, and thank God that we had Andrew because he was not going to let it go. After all this <laughs> ups and downs, he stuck by it, so. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so grateful that you renewed our option year after year and <laughs> didn't give up on it, believe in us. <laughs> And for the cast, I mean, Amelia, Scoot, everyone really, in having this responsibility of taking on real people, what was your process of researching, preparing for those roles? I mean, I, I read the script and I actually grew up, my grandma used to live with 15 gay men. And so growing up, I would, again, like Alicia, you know, go downstairs for breakfast and there would be men in dress and outfits and makeup and, uh, and I'd be like, oh, morning, and it was just normal to me. And, um, and we'd do parties, we'd have these garden parties. And so when I read the script, it, it felt close to me. And, um, and then I started crying. And I think when, when something hits you so much on paper, you can only hope that if, if it's turned into a film, it will hit people. And um, I loved it, and I read Alicia's memoir, and I was just blown away. And I, yeah, I jumped at the chance to be a part of it. And I, I feel so grateful that Andrew let me. <laughs> And Scoot, same question for you. What was your process of preparing? Um, I was like elated to even get the part. Um, uh, I never in a million years thought I would get a role like this. Um, but when I read the script, it was undoubtedly just beautiful and a beautiful love story between a father and a daughter um, that I just, I remember when Andrew pushed the phone call like two weeks, I, I like had a panic attack. <laughs> Why? What's happening over the next two weeks? Why can't I meet with him tomorrow? You know, and he was just busy and doing other stuff, but it was like a, a real, my manager will tell you, it was a real moment for us. <laughs> <laughs> and can you tell us a little bit about recreating San Francisco in the 70s and what that was like? Yeah, this is probably a good question for Megan and I to answer because it's San Francisco is a very expensive city to shoot in now. It's it's impossible, especially when you're making. We made the movie for, you know, very low budget, so um, it was tough. And we looked at other options. We looked at New Orleans. We looked at Vancouver. We looked at Melbourne, Australia. At one point, Every, anything in the world was cheaper than San Francisco. Um, and uh, and we found a situation where we were able to shoot our interiors just outside of the city in the East Bay. Um, Megan, can, Megan found this amazing location. Just so you guys know, all three apartments, the book signing party, the poetry reading, the Italian restaurant, the hospice, the Wait, girls' dorms. Don't get everything. Yeah, I know, but, <laughs> 
<laughs> we were lucky we found um, two retired captain's mansions um, in East Bay, and we actually use them as kind of a sound stage. So as man Andrew mentioned, all of the interiors were shot in these two mansions. Wow. And we had some, um, you know, some uh, issues, not issues, but um, restrictions with Nessa's hours. So we'd shoot mm -hmm. her in the morning in the Page Street or Oak Street apartment, and then we'd move upstairs and we'd go shoot Alicia and Scoot in the later Hate Street apartment. So we were able to move around and shoot um, on basically one location. And we shot all of our exteriors in the city, though. Obviously, we go, we, so we spent a couple days Golden Gate Park, mm -hmm. the street scenes, and all of that. So, and the San Francisco Film Commission was really terrific about all that. They are um, very supportive of the project, and, yeah. and they Actually, made. Yeah. And, and of course, there's a lot of um, archival footage that we used, which was really important to me to use archival footage. I think it it, it um, contributes to sort of this. Um, it's kind of this scrapbook of memories which we tried to create in this film and they helped heighten that a bit. I want to make sure I'm opening it up to the audience so we have some time for questions. Are there any hands? Oh, it's a little dark, but I see one in the middle over there. Yeah, you right there. Yeah. I'll, yeah. So if you say it and I'll repeat the question. The question was for Scoot if he has children and, and prepared for playing the role of a father. Um, that's a really great question. My daughter is the exact same age as Nessa. Um, so it was a pretty surreal experience. And then uh, working with Amelia as well um, was a surreal experience to sort of envision my conversation between me and my daughter when she's older. So um, yeah, those, this role was... I really wanted to do it justice for Alicia, but it was also something that was really <clears throat> close and personal to me too. And Nessa, actually, what, what was the experience like for you being on set? It was exciting and it was fun. <laughs> Your first movie, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. And I also got a second role for another movie. Oh, congratulations! <laughs> I see a hand over there in the middle. Yeah? Yeah. So, I have to say, I'm so humbled by this whole experience because I... This is my first movie, too. Um, it's amazing, right? Um, and and I, I was, um, Andrew was so kind to get in touch and ask me to, to be a, it's a small part, but I was thrilled. Um, I also have some family ties to the Castro in San Francisco. My mom has super eight footage of her as a teenager at the Pride Parade. And um, uh, my aunt and my uncle lived on the Castro for 10 years. and. You know, anything that has to do with queer issues and queer history means a lot to me. It's something that I champion a lot. And I was really nervous when I got on set because I was like, I hope I can do this. And I have to say, Scoot was so instantly warm, gave me a big hug and was like, we're going to do this. And you made me feel so comfortable. And Amelia, you made me feel so comfortable. So yeah, I had a great time. I'm really honored to be a part of it. I, and I have to say that Adam showed up and like, it's very rare that an actor just shows up and that day just like literally knocks it out of the park so like it was incredible what he brought um in such a short time it was really fun yeah thank you thank you are there any there's a hand in the back yes i see you if you want to stand up and project Can you hear me okay? yeah yeah So the question was about the time lapse between the two parts um, and being So is that question for Scoot or for me? I'm sorry. All of us. Okay, well, I mean, this is the, um, this is the magic of movie making. Um, you, you, we only, like I said, this is a very, it was a small budget and a very tight shooting schedule. We only had a few days in San Francisco proper and we had Golden Gate Park for actually a, a day, one day. 
Yeah, we shot everything in Golden Gate Park in one day. Um, so it was, and it was like Megan said, we were, it was like shooting two movies. We would bring Nessa in in the morning and we would shoot all of this stuff. And mind you, we were shooting the first half of the movie with Nessa on 16 millimeter. And then we switched to digital for the second half. Um, so we would almost, it was like shooting a whole other movie. So Nessa would leave, goodbye Nessa, she's done with her day. Amelia would show up, Scoo would have to go from 1970s to 1980s, the hair and makeup, and we would jump into it for the second half of the day. Yeah, our hair and makeup people were just incredible. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were doing, what, what was going on with the, with the musical chairs of this movie, just to get it shot in those, we shot the whole movie in 23 days. Well, 21 days, and then we snuck away to Paris for two days, so. <laughs> Yeah, our DP Greta, where are you Greta? I mean, I don't like to brag about Greta too much because she's sort of my secret weapon and I'm trying to keep her on the DL. <laughs> she's incredibly talented. We have time for one last question. I see a hand in the middle over there. Are you with the glasses? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you also. I have just one more thing. Making movies like this is really, really hard, as you, and I'm sure there's a lot of filmmakers here. It's very difficult. To, I'm a first time director. It was really, even with somebody like Sofia Coppola, we know how hard it was to like r raise money to make these non genre films. We also had a producer on this film, uh, Laura Sud Sudro. Laura Sudro. Yeah, Laura Sudro, who is our fairy godmother. and champion this movie from day one. She's known Alicia since they were in Paris together and... Um... When I, um, I actually returned to Paris in 1993 after my father died to scatter his ashes in the Seine. That's not in the film. But I stayed with Laure, um, who lived on the Champs-Élysées. She put me up and um, her father had died the same year my father died. And so she has been with this for uh, 30 years. Yeah, and, she, and she's a film producer and came in and really greenlit this movie for us, and that's a very special thing in this world. I want to thank you all so much. Congratulations again on your world premiere. Thank you.